Hello everyone, welcome to part 3 of the academic research series. So today we are going to talk about research life cycle. So I'm guessing that with the previous two videos you have already selected your research supervisor and now you're ready to get going with the research. So let's dive in. So first of all, we are going to discuss about the different types of research and you need to select which one are you actually undertaking at the current moment. So first of all, we have the method development type of research. So I'm giving an example here, for example, identification and recognition of rice diseases and pests using some network. That means it's a method which helps you identify and recognize rice diseases, right? So it's a method paper. It's a method type of research. Then you have another type which is called benchmarking, benchmarking existing tools. So for example, you can see here benchmarking recent computational tools for some kind of DNA binding protein identification. So there are basically some research tools available which actually help identify this kind of thing. So now we are trying to benchmark those like how well they perform. We are trying to see those from a neutral perspective. That is also very valuable in the community. Then you have review papers. So in the review papers, you don't normally have experiments. So in these two types of papers, we are going to have to do a lot of experiments, coding, like and other stuff. But in review papers, you don't have to do that. You mainly have to review the entire literature, review the trends and etc. And normally the best review papers are written by the domain experts. So as a new researcher, you shouldn't really aim at writing review papers. That is my advice for you. So one example here is machine learning applications in genetics and genomics. It is a sort of structured review on what are out there, which I mean, what works are out there on machine learning applications for genetics and genomics. Then you have the discovery type of paper. So basically you discover something which people haven't really seen or people haven't really thought of and you put that as a nice paper. And for example, you can see here signatures of copy number alterations in human cancer. So this paper sort of discovered some signatures of uh, something called copy number alteration in human cancer, which people later on can actually use to develop some methods or do some other things. So this uh, kind of paper also has some experiments, some validation of whatever discovery they are claiming to be. And finally, we have theory paper. So theory paper doesn't have experiments normally. So they are typically proofs, mathematics, probability, statistics, those kind of things. So if you are really into mathematics and stuff, then I think this is for you. For example, here you can see a paper on, on the theory of implicit deep learning, global convergence with implicit layers. So it's a theory of related to deep learning. So now with your supervisor, you need to sort of chalk out which type of paper or which type of research you are going to undertake. After you do that, the next phase will be explore your research domain and to find research gaps. So you basically, before this step, you now know in which research domain you want to work on and what type of research work you are willing to undertake. So the type of research work I've already shown you before. I mean, the five types that I showed you. I mean, there are more types, but those are the main five, as far as I know. Then you need to use ChatGPT and Google Scholar. So ChatGPT, I think you already know about this. Google Scholar, you can just search it up on Google. So it's a nice uh, place to actually search for uh, different papers and research works. So you can go, the, go to that website and you can find proper research papers in your domain. And when you are doing this, you definitely need to take help from your supervisor. So when I'm talking about top research papers in your domain, so domain is a big thing, right? As I told you before, natural language processing is a domain, bioinformatics is a domain. So you definitely need to take help from your supervisor to narrow down the papers you need to actually look at. So after looking at those papers, you need to find some clear gaps. Okay, so when you are reading these papers, there will be a lot of papers, like maybe 30 or 40 or 50 papers, and you don't need to read them in detail. You just need to go through their introduction section. So in each paper, there will be a section called introduction. You need to read them thoroughly. It's a small section normally. And you need to sort of see whether there is any clear gap after reading all of those papers in your domain. So for example, when I was reading papers on bioinformatics and cell-free DNA, I saw that there was only one method that could quantify tumor from blood. So I decided to focus on that particular topic, which is to quantify tumor from blood in my PhD research. But this is not enough because you also need to see whether uh, it is feasible to actually undertake that research and to fulfill the gap. For example, I decided to work on blood-based tumor quantification but I needed to assess whether my lab has facilities of doing such things or storing this data and doing large scale of computing on the large files that are produced. 
And also, this is very, very important, whether my supervisor has sufficient ex experience in this field for guiding me. Now, this is why I, I want to repeat again that it is very, very important to maintain a clear communication with your supervisor at a weekly basis so that you actually understand what you should undertake. Because if you start working on some research project on your own, then later on you are going to see that you are not receiving guidance. And as a new researcher, it is extremely important to be guided by someone who is more experienced. So after you have done this, your next step is to fix your problem statement and to perform the literature review. So what do I mean by that? So now you sort of know which problem you want to work on. You need to discuss with your supervisor and fix the problem you want to solve, like pinpoint that, okay, this is the work I'm going to do. This is the scope of my work. Then you need to perform detailed investigation or research works that closely relate to your problem. So previously, you sort of thoroughly investigated the whole domain and you read the introduction section to get an idea. But here, that is not enough. Here, you are going to solely focus on those research works which revolve around the problem statement you want to work on. And here, only going to skimming over literature, I mean, introduction is not good enough. You need to actually thoroughly study the papers and you need to try and replicate the most relevant studies ideally. I mean, it is not possible always, but sometimes it is possible to replicate maybe two to three or four studies that are relevant. And actually, it helps you to get a very good idea about how to work on the problem that you have focused on. So after you have done that, you need to fix the research goals that you want to achieve, right? I mean, you want to solve a problem, that's fine. But also, while solving that problem, you want to achieve a few goals, few research goals, okay? And finally, you want to make a concrete plan on how you want to achieve those goals. What should be part of that concrete plan? So number one is data collection. If you need to collect some data, it's a long process. You need to plan for that in advance. You have to plan for how you want to do surveys if that is included in your work. Then you need to do some experiments. So you need to make a plan on how you want to do this. And for experiments, you may have to learn some new things, do some courseworks. And if you have to do it, you need to start that. And finally, after doing the experiments, you need to evaluate your method. And how exactly are you going to do that? You need to make a plan on that. Now that you have done that much, now this is at the core of the research. You have begun the experiments and you have you will be doing the evaluation. So after finishing the experiments, you will be doing the evaluation basically. So just apart from the relevant experiments, whatever you need to do to reach your research goal, and this will be the big tedious process. Maybe it will take uh, five months, 10 months, a year or two years depends on the research project. And after doing everything, you may fail to reach your research goals. And you need to be able to evaluate how badly you failed and your supervisor will help you in doing that. So you need to talk to your supervisor and lab mates. You need to acquire new skills if required. And you probably need to redo the experiments from a different perspective, right? So a same study can be done in many different ways. So you need to do this in different ways. Now, suppose you have done everything you can and I mean, until you succeed, I mean, you can succeed after doing all of those things. But after, uh, after doing all of those things, all trying all the different perspectives, maybe you have run out of ideas and maybe you have failed in achieving your research goals. Then you need to evaluate a few things. And did you actually achieve at least a few goals, which is enough to write a good research paper? Again, your research supervisor will be the one telling you this. You need to discuss with him. Now, if you haven't actually achieved any of your research goals, if you have failed completely, then you need to think whether you have gained some important insights from your failure that can be actually valuable for the scientific community, right? When they perform similar things, similar analysis, this can also turn into a good research project and a good research paper. So you need to think about this. Now, if none of the above is true, if you haven't gained any insight and if you haven't been able to achieve any research goal, then it's best to abandon the research as fast as you can and you need to restart the process. So what does restart mean? So as I said before, at first you need to explore the research domain to see if there is any clear research gap. So you need to again go to that, go back to the whiteboard with some marker, right? So that is, I mean, that's a painful process, but it's the reality of the research world. Sometimes you have just wasted maybe a year or two years. I mean, it can happen and it happened to me as well. Okay, so now uh, if you are successful, which, I mean, if you're successful, it's great. Everything is great now. Then you need to evaluate your work on external data sets or you can use external people, scientists to evaluate your work and you need to compare against existing works, right? I mean, there are existing works and you need to compare how well your work is doing compared to those. So now you are done with experiments and evaluation. Very good. 
Now, after all of that, what is the end product of your research? So after doing everything, what is the end product? Now, obviously, after finishing the research, you need to write the paper and stuff. I will talk about that in the next video. But what is the research end product? So first of all, method development. So, I mean, you can, you are working on a method development type of research. Your output will typically be a software or some protocol which people can follow to develop something or maybe some tool, right? If you are doing benchmarking, of existing tools, your output can be performance ranking of those tools, pros and cons of those tools, and their applicability in different situations. Then if you're doing review, then it will be obviously a structured overview of recent trends and technology and app or applications on that field. If you're doing discovery, then obviously it will be the discovery you made and its validation. And finally, if you're doing theory, then it is going to be a hypothesis and proof or maybe theoretical analysis of some method, or maybe if you're developing algorithm in computer science, it can be a more runtime efficient algorithm. So that is all about the research life cycle. It's a tough cycle. I've been there. I mean, people who are much more experienced have been there more often, and you will be there too. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about probably patent applications and paper writing and other things. So I will leave the link of the next video in the description. If you like the video, if you like the series, feel free to donate to our channel via the link in the description because it really helps us to make quality content. And finally, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe and share the video with your friends. Thank you very much.